And first, just give us the latest. We've had some breaking news on this at least a week. So what does this timeline look like? Hi. It looks now that all the earlier estimates, like those calling for a Monday restart or Tuesday, aren't so far-fetched anymore. And in fact, going by what we're hearing, this means that Monday or Tuesday might actually be the earliest that the ship could actually be removed. We, we know yesterday from, um, uh, from our reporting that the ship is, has been lodged in about five metres of sand, which doesn't seem like very much, but involves a lot of digging using very, very large, very sophisticated um, digging equipment and dredges. Um, and walk us through what happens now for the other ships that are now blocked. And if this is going to take not just days, weeks, do they start to contemplate that costly detour of not going through the Suez Canal and instead going around Africa? Well, it is actually quite a long trip to detour from the Suez Canal. So assuming that the ship was already at the Suez Canal, it's more likely that they would wait around and hopefully try and see whether the um, rescue efforts and the salvage work goes ahead quicker. Right now, we've got salvage companies Smith and uh, Nippon Salvage who have been hired by the ship owners to um, undertake work, and they're working with the authorities. So for those ships that are already at the canal, maybe they'll wait it out. But equally, those that haven't reached the Suez Canal and are coming from places like the U.S., where we're seeing uh, corn shipments being diverted, and I'm from Europe, where we're hearing about um, container vessels being diverted down to Africa, all these uh, things that companies are starting to think about and starting to do. So this is holding up billions of dollars worth of oil and consumer goods. Looking at oil, since the price did spike, how much oil do you think is currently being held back on the market because of this ship? That's a bit tough. I think it would have to do with the number of vessels that are currently being held up. And um, those um, numbers are not with me right now. What I can say, however, is looking at the tanker freight markets, uh, the, the tanker freight costs have surged, which means that it costs now much more to hire a tanker that's available to bring any oil that's coming from, uh, from the Middle East to Europe, for example, or to bring any fuels over. So um, it definitely is a shock to the oil, oil market, and we've seen volatility increase this week just based on all of this that's happening in the Suez Canal.